when we hear the term wellness, most of us would think this means the absence of disease. But is this truly the measure of well-being? What does the word wellness mean? And is there such a thing as the management of wellness? In 1946, official members representing 61 nations gathered at the International Health Conference and signed the World Health Organization's new definition of health. The definition says that health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. This definition hasn't changed for over 70 years. Why? Simply because they got it right the first time. Yet, this wonderful holistic definition of health is rarely practiced. And the gap between the theory and practice has widened over time. Almost 30 years later, this prompted Dr. John Travis to develop a new model he refers to as the illness wellness continuum. The model suggests that there are many degrees of illness and wellness. On one end of the spectrum, you have premature death. On the other, the highest potential wellness. Treatment is only addressing your signs and symptoms. It will only get you to a neutral point the absence of symptoms. Only through awareness, education, and growth can we achieve the highest possible wellness. What you perceive of your state of health or illness at any given time is only the tip of the iceberg. An iceberg serves as an excellent metaphor for your overall health because it only reveals a small part of its size above water with more than 90% of its mass submerged beneath the surface. Travis utilized this iceberg model as the second key concept in understanding wellness. The first level within this model is that of lifestyle and behavior. What we eat and drink, our activity level, quality of rest and sleep, and our habits, both the healthy and unhealthy ones. Although many people follow a way of life that is destructive, not just to their own well-being, but also to the planet in which they live, they find themselves helpless to change their way of life. Why? To understand the reason behind this paradox, we must dive to a deeper level in the iceberg model, to the psychological and motivational level. Created by our culture, upbringing, and environment, as we continue to dive deeper through the submerged iceberg, we reach the next level of wellness, the spiritual level. Ultimately, this level submerged at the iceberg's deepest point is the one that determines whether the tip of the iceberg will reflect 
illness or weirdness. All of these levels affect each other and their overall interaction determines our state of wellness. Therefore, managing my wellness requires that I manage my senses, what I allow my eyes to see and my ears to hear. Managing my wellness requires that I manage my feelings. The feelings of forgiveness, laughter, and love. All these feelings heal me from within and allow me to heal others. On the other hand, the feelings of stress and fear, jealousy and envy, or hate and loathing, these are emotions that harm us before they harm others. Managing my wellness requires that I manage my mind and protect it from any random negative thoughts. How? By feeding my mind with positive thoughts and understanding that all that comes from God is good. It also requires that I choose carefully the books I read, the lectures I attend, and the discussions or debates I engage in. Managing my wellness requires that I manage my habits, starting with the habit of sleep, both in quantity and quality, and avoiding bad habits and all forms of addiction to maintain physical, moral, and mental purity. Managing my wellness requires that I manage my environment, my place of living, and my friends and family, given their great influence on our thoughts, mental state, and way of life. Managing my wellness requires that I manage my body. This includes monitoring what I eat and drink. It also requires that I give my body and my digestive system the rest they require through fasting and maintain my health through exercise. Managing my wellness requires that I manage my soul, what I believe in and practice, the strength of my relationship with my Creator, and my connection to the Spirit within me. Managing my wellness requires that I practice giving. Yes, giving a crucial element in achieving wellness of the mind, body, and soul. All of these requirements are given to us by our Creator and span all aspects of life. Science continues to shed light on their benefits to our overall wellness. There are more than 50 prophetic sayings concerning wellness. He encouraged us to ask God for forgiveness and wellness, for no believer has been granted a better gift than wellness. The concept of worship in Islam equates to wellness. It is not a collection of rituals and supplications detached from our daily activity. It is following a divine way of life to attain wellness in this life and hereafter. The Quran summarizes all of this into a single verse. God promised that if you follow a righteous way of life, you will be granted wellness in this life and the life hereafter. To emphasize this, whenever the Prophet mentions wellness in the afterlife, he links it to wellness in life on this earth. But what does all of this mean? It means that striving to pursue wellness with pure intention in this life is the single most important task for any human being.